Hello, and welcome to another edition of NFL Studs. My name, of course, is Stephen Compion, and I will be talking you through the very productive, absolute, legendary career of one Mr. Tony Gonzalez. So, just a couple quick little highlights here from the old NFL.com. We won't be showing too much of it because we, of course, don't want to be flagged, but as you can see, one of the absolute best tight ends in NFL history. I mean, obviously you can dispute between him and Gronk, but he is widely considered the best tight end in NFL history for a lot of reasons, man. Let's go ahead and get into it, but these stats speak for themselves. 1,325 receptions for 15,127 yards. He had 1100, 111 touchdown home catches. Those are insane stats. Those are insane stats for a wide receiver, but especially for a tight end, and especially in the era that he was playing. Uh, this guy was an absolute dominant force. Um, the best tight end throughout 2003 to 2006. Complete dominant run there. Always had um, the guy over in San Diego shit. Why am I struggling with his name? You guys know who I'm talking about. Gage. No, not Gage. Fuck him. All right, whatever. Either way, it was always him and the guy from San Diego who were considered the two best, always in the pro ball. He had, like, ridiculous amounts of pro ball selections, uh, played in California. But just some of the absolute legacy and leaderboards for this guy. Um, All-time uh, reception leader for tight ends. All time, uh, you know, in the top top numbers for receptions as far as touchdowns. Too. Let's go right to those stats. This, uh, this whole shit's bullshit. That other site. Let's go to the old, good old Wikipedia. So, Mr. Gonzalez was, of course, a basketball player in college, probably been high school. I'm sure you guys have heard this a million times, so not to get into it too much. Uh, but he did go to California and play for the Golden Bears, where he actually was coached by Steve Mariyoshi. Uh, was the NFL was a football coach over there, and so got to coach a young Tony Gonzalez while in college. Anyway, this is a first six-time All-Pro a four-time second All-Pro, 14-time Pro Bowl selection. That is 14 times he was selected to the Pro Bowl. Like I said, it was mostly him and the guy from San Diego who were fucking blanking on his name. Anthony Gage? Uh, God, it's going to bother me. Anyway, uh, 14 Pro Bowl selections is absolutely insane. NFL re receptions leader in 2004 as a tight end, once again. 2000's All-Decade team. Uh, you know, the 100th NFL's anniversary of all-time team. You know, just ridiculous amounts of stats. Um, like I said, the most receiving yards for a tight end and most career receptions for a tight end. So he started off his career with the Kansas City Chiefs who drafted him. Uh, actually spent the majority of his career over there. Uh, spent about 12 years. But, uh, yeah, they had to trade up from Tennessee, which I'm sure Tennessee uh, Tennessee Oilers absolutely regretted that because he did go on to be, well, like I said, we mentioned, uh, one of the best tight ends in all of NFL history. Uh, his rookie year wasn't too crazy. He did have a couple touchdowns, had a block, um, block punt, got him on the all-rookie team. From there, he just kind of took off, man. You know, every year getting better and better, 620 yards. His sophomore year, 884, I mean, 48 his junior year and just continued to develop from there. Um, by his fourth year, he was already hitting 1,200 yards receiving, nine touchdowns, was named to a pro ball, um, all, all pro as well. He just continued to absolutely dominate as he, as he got older. And this guy, like, once he started hitting his prime, as I mentioned before, from 2003 to 2006, he started really setting some crazy – Crazy uh, records, you know. So in 2004, he set the NFL record for um, 102 passes. Okay, you know, that was tight ends, actually. So I take back what I was saying earlier. But that's still an insane amount of touchdown catches. I mean, not just receptions in general. He had a game where he had 14, uh, 144 yards against the San Diego Chargers. Probably wanted to show his man over there. Still not coming to me, guys. Sorry. Um, and, you know, he held on to the most receptions until eight years later when, when Jason Witten broke it in 2012. So, you know, his 102 yards receptions is pretty fucking crazy. You know, I think, um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Gronk ever really was a high receptions kind of guy, more of a big play type of guy. But yeah, so he had a couple, he had, um, although a very productive career, the Chiefs were always not very good when he was, um, with them. 
So he never really won any playoff games with them. Kind of a rough go for him at that with that. But uh, he did start to pass Shannon Sharp and Ozzy Newsom, you know, absolute tight end legends in the in the record books. Yeah, and then he headed over to um to the good old Atlanta Falcons, which I do remember him over there dominating the Buccaneers on many occasions. We were always terrible, so it wasn't like it was personal, and I don't know anything against him for that. But yeah, Mr. Gonzalez headed over there. They had a really good team back in 2010. They went 13-3. Unfortunately, they did lose their playoff game to the eventual Super Bowl champions, otherwise known as the Green Bay Packers, and Mr. Aaron Rodgers, the year he won ahead and finally won one, and the only one he's won so far. But yeah, at the expense of Mr. Gonzalez, he uh, was, they were a second seed, so it had to be a huge disappointment. A lot of controversy with him about whether he was going to retire or not. Ended up unretiring a couple times, um, but just dominated his whole time with the Falcons, even though, you know, he was coming in out of retirement, even though he was 37 years old when he finally retired. Guy had 83 receptions, 859 yards receiving, and eight touchdowns his final year. So that's pretty fucking crazy. That's definitely going out on top. Um, he also won a playoff game with the Falcons. Uh, I don't know being... Yep. Yeah. And he did get to play an arrowhead before he left. He beat the the Seattle Seahawks. That's right. They beat the Seattle Seahawks for Tony Gonzalez's one and only um, playoff win. So kind of a bummer that such a legend like him didn't win more playoff games. But playoffs are fucking hard to win in, man, all right? Anyways, as we mentioned before, frequently considered one of the best tight ends of all time. Uh, most touchdowns, most 1,000 yards receivers receiving by tight end. You know, multiple chief records. We'll see if uh, he can hang on to those. Mr. Kelsey is pretty damn good as well. Uh, he only had, he didn't record reception in only five out of his 70, out of 270 games, which is completely crazy. He um, had a complete, he was able to record, a, had a reception streak, which ran from November 26, 2000, to his final game in December 28th. 2013. So those five games where he didn't record a reception were only like in his early going, I guess. So absolute fucking legend, Tony Gonzalez. You could look at these stats. Uh, the man was just an absolute beast. You know, like uh, he did have a bit of a fumble problem in his sophomore year, which he talks about in his football life, but sorted that out. Got it figured out. Um, you know, sort of by his junior year, he finally figured it out for sure. Never really fumbled again, or at least not one that he lost. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, good for him. Absolute legend. Loved seeing him play. Uh, he is now a commentator for Amazon Prime. He has bounced around to many different places. He's been with CBS, been with Fox Sports. He's good on the mic. I enjoy listening to him. Uh, the guy also has his own YouTube channel, so I think he does like interviews over there and stuff. I saw some of Snoop Dogg, so if you guys are down to check out Tony Gonzalez's YouTube page and hear maybe an interview with him and Snoop Dogg, as um, I'm sure Tony Gonzalez is a huge pothead. Definitely, definitely strikes me as one. Um, but yeah, so shout out to Tony Gonzalez, fucking absolute stud. Was a pleasure to watch him play. Um, one of the legends of the game for sure. And we're gonna go ahead and end it with a Mr. Quote from him. So he talks about in the NFL, you earn or lose respect on every play. I've seen players go from dominating to being dominated in a heartbeat. So you know, I think that you can apply that to a lot of things in life. You know. Uh, every day you're out there, your word and what you do and the actions that you portray are earning your respect or they're losing respect for you. And if you just keep on doing dumb shit and keep on losing respect, you're eventually going to start getting dominated, not just on the football field, but in life, baby. But just to throw out a football example out there, um, someone from a team that Mr. Gonzalez played for was Vic Beasley. I remember seeing him his rookie year, maybe his sophomore year. Absolutely dominated the guy. That was on 2016 when they had that run. You know, dude had double-digit sacks. Looks like he was going to be an absolute monster. I was like, oh, great. Dude just fell off hardcore. I think I saw him in the XFL recently. Uh, not even necessarily dominating. So, once again, respect is earned. You got to be out there every day working to keep it. Work it. And if you're not working to keep it, it's a good chance you're losing it. NFL studs.